So if you've got a, um, a WordPress type of website, you have a very powerful kind of website. <coughs> WordPress is software that lets you make a variety of kinds of websites, uh, from basic sort of like uh, business card websites to blogs to e-commerce websites. So I will mention in general some concepts, and then we'll get into details. Uh, so WordPress can create business card sites, um, blog sites, and e-commerce sites. Well, let me ask you, working backwards, what's an e-commerce site? What does it do? sells products, which would be goods, services, real or virtual. So you can use WordPress and any kind of software, of course, but in this class we cover WordPress. We can use WordPress to make a website that sells any kind of product, even goods and services. So let's say I'm a public speaker and I'm trying to get hired for engagements to speak. So that's a service but it's a thing that I can sell on my site. Traditionally, of course, I've got a product, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to sell birthday cakes and uh, cookies and all of that uh, all over the country or whatever while I'm going to ship physical products uh, to, to, to people in real life. And virtual, okay, what, what might I mean with virtual products? What do you think I mean about that? are cookies. Services are uh, speaking engagements. And both of them are real. What about virtual? Like online classes. Online classes. Admin services, yeah. So these things that might not be as tangible that happen online, like a class or managing something online digitally. What about ebooks? and music and that sort of thing. Those are also virtual products. Well, all of those sorts of things you can sell uh, via WordPress. So WordPress software can help you make a website that focuses on that. A blog website, so this is articles, you know, uh, text focused. There's a lot of websites out there that focus on text. I follow a lot of tech websites out there, tech blogs. There were some big announcements recently, uh, yesterday, in the world of tech. Apple held a big conference and showed off their new stuff. And so like all the tech blogs were writing about what Apple unveiled. So those are websites that are blog sites. What do you think I mean by business card websites? Focus on contact info. Yeah, so I'm just trying to tell you uh, my my name and my address and my email and contact me and basic stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'm not selling anything. Maybe I'm not really writing articles and such. It's just you know maybe one screen and it's got all my relevant contact info. So in general, these are three kinds of sites and there's a, a few other kinds as well, like social media sites, which are a little too advanced for us. But WordPress can make any kinds of sites like this, and we're going to focus on the e-commerce aspect of it. WordPress say the main WordPress screen and I'll just abbreviate it word WP the main WordPress screen is the dashboard that's what I have here which I won't go into every single screen but I'll mention a few screens that are going to be the most important for us the main screen is the dashboard where you manage everything and some of the important screens are themes pages posts and plugins themes where you manage the design of your site pages where you set up the um, constant how should we word that constant content of your site and I'll explain a little more in a moment <coughs> posts where you manage your dynamic content plugins where you add more features to your site. So one of the things that I really like about WordPress is you can 
put the content of your site together, the name of your site and the pictures and the various screens, you can put that together. And then a year later you decide, I'm tired of the look of it, I'm tired of the design, I want to change it. So we can go to the themes screen and change the theme and all your content is still there. It transfers over totally easily, basically. And you have a new design, but all your stuff is still there, your products are still there, everything transfers pretty easily. I've been doing web design since I said, I said since the early 2000s, after I got my degree, I've seen it evolve. Uh, back in the beginning, it was very, very code intensive. You had to write HTML code and other code to make your site work. And then to change your site, it was a big endeavor. It's like retrofitting a house. You had to uh, get into the wiring of your house. You have to get into the behind the scenes of your site to make changes. In the old days, it was very difficult. Then software like Dreamweaver came out, which was a lot easier to work with, um, a lot more powerful. Nowadays, WordPress and others related are the, are the big way to do it. And it's even easier to set up a site and then change it add to it and yes it's new software to learn and make mistakes on and get good at it but it's um, I think very available to do so and it's got some of the largest market share uh, like 30 percent of websites of the world use WordPress and so from this particular screen I'm seeing my my dashboard my site looks like this to people I haven't changed any of the defaults so I've got a picture of a plant and the name of my business and okay that's how this design looks like and I'll write the notes in a moment here but I can easily go over to my themes and then say well I'm tired of that theme I want to switch over to to this other theme and then now when I see my site my site has changed to this the sidebar is different the main content screen is a little different the picture moved and such or I can go to another one this other design now it looks a little more like that. Well, all of these themes that came with WordPress are a little boring, so we have an easy way to add new. And this unlocks the, the big old marketplace of a variety of themes. This will look perfect for my site. Install. So WordPress has this ability to easily switch between themes. And I'll make some notes in a moment here. So now my site is this. I've never used this theme before. And I like how it looks, but I want to change that yellow color, or I want to move this here, or whatever. I, I have this ability to change designs relatively easily and still customize it. So for the notes over here, you'll find it by being in your dashboard, appearance, themes. There are thousands of free and not free themes out there. Much of WordPress is on a freemium model. You get a lot for free, but there are also premium versions of things, like themes. Uh, this theme that I just switched over to, I think it looks nice, but I want to change the columns or I want to put a picture in a different spot. And sometimes some of that editing, when you try to do some of the editing, it'll tell you, oh, that's available in our premium version. In our free version, you have these three options. But in the premium version, you have these 30 options. So you see that a lot on modern software. Yes? When you change between themes, do you risk losing any text that you've customized in some special box? Possibly, depending how you've done it, if you're over like on the more complex editor, uh, that might not transfer completely. This is like the really power users screen, but when you're on these other normal user screen, no, you should not lose the content. Now, let's say you move to another theme and it puts it in the wrong place or it, or it hides it, but it doesn't delete your content. So if you go back to your first theme, it's still there. So it never deletes your content. It might rearrange it. Or, or might not actually activate it until you go to your menu and turn it on or something like that, but your content should always be available. So changing over to different themes, uh, you have the premium and you have the free one, and I'll, I'll mention a couple of things I think are important here. We've got uh, the built-in 
uh, theme marketplace is good, but this one is better. One of the ones that I really recommend, I have no affiliation with them, they don't give me a kickback when I mention them, but one that I really like is called themeforest.net. Uh, this is a site full of thousands of great themes that are highly customizable, very powerful. Most of them, however, focus on, on a paid theme ranging between 5 and $35. Um, one-time fee so again there's a little bit of investment to setting up a website and I would not uh, trust like when you see make a complete website for $250 uh, it might not be customizable it might not have a lot of features it might be slow you never know so if you hire a professional or you do it yourself you need to educate yourself that there's a lot of little expenses but they're part of the cost of doing business. Just like if I've got my business on Main Street, I've got to pay for the rent and the electricity and all of that. To have your website online, you've got to pay for the domain name, the hosting, the SSL, the theme, perhaps, and other things. But hopefully, you're at a certain point, you're making enough money that that is, you know, not a big, uh, not a big in cost. And I'm not a tax professional. But you can ask your tax, tax professional if some of these are part of the write-offs and the deductions that you can do as part of your business. So again, I'm not a professional. You can ask a professional. So a site like Theme Forest is going to be full of lots of different themes. Let's say here I want restaurant WordPress themes. And it's $39, $64, $59. Well, I like that one. What does it look like? Well, I can go in and see the preview. I can see the live site. You have these different layouts. A lot of the times what you get for what you get when you pay for these things is tech support. How do you use it? How do I change it? I'm having trouble. So you can get a lot of great free things and I just activated this one totally for free and it may it may not do what I needed to do and I need help that's when they will sell you their their, their premium version in which you get out of a, a site marketplace like theme forest is this is all a big infrastructure that's been around for years I've used it for years where you can have these designs and then get actual tech support and you can read reviews like over here this one's got this has got 1,600 sales, 109 reviews, four and a half stars. This one's got 1,500, seems very close, but it's only 68 reviews, it's four stars. Maybe this one, this theme is better than that theme, based on reviews and such. So, themes. Try to focus on an e-commerce optimized theme. They sell, they, they create, they give away themes in a variety of topics. Maybe there's a great looking theme, but it's more focused as a business card style website. Just like I mentioned up here, business card website, maybe it doesn't have some of the features. Maybe the great theme that you just looked at right now was more focused on blogs that's not what I needed to do so when you search for themes when you try to get a theme for your site focus on those that are optimized for e-commerce those are the ones that have better shopping cart experiences for your clients maybe easier usage and, and better designs So let me get a, a show of hands here from people uh, in, in class. Ha has anyone in class heard of the site here, themeforest.net, before? A couple people. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say about it or share it? Thumbs up, thumbs down on it? Thumbs up? Okay, thumbs up. So I, I've used it for, for a while, and, and I do recommend it. Um, you also get other things here at Theme Forest uh, in their in their section about graphics. I need some photos for my website. Here we have various fonts, logos, etc. 
So instead of doing a Google search and finding an image and borrowing it from online, they have a variety of stock images or customized images. So this whole, it, this whole thing, the Envato uh, market, it's all a big collection of a, a lot of things that you might need uh, for your online website. A design for my website, graphics, audio, video, etc. Photos. So just curious here. Cookies. What sort of cookie? If I don't have a good camera and I don't have anyone that can take photos for me, I might find here for five dollars uh, I get a license to use these pictures and um, this will look perfect on my website. It's perfectly composed. It's a little dark on the projector but it's perfectly composed and it looks really tasty and that'll look great on my website. When you buy it, um, can you use it so you have to check the agreement, the license agreement, per the item, and somewhere it'll tell you uh, what are the, what it says right here, multiple free or commercial up to 5,000 copies, no merchandise, no merchandise use, total price of the item is a buyer fee. So you just have to check the details of each item to tell you how it can be used. Okay, so pages where you set up the constant content of your site. What I mean by that is the the information that doesn't change info that doesn't change often on your site. So I've got Victor's Bakery, I sell cookies, I sell cupcakes, birthday cakes, whatever. I, I sell, you know, baked goods. On my website, what do you think are some screens or some things that don't really change too often? info sure anything else how about some what's that privacy policy. privacy policy that's a good one anything else what about about us the information about the company these things you probably set them up at one point and don't change them for months or years you know, this information is still relevant. My website founding, founding hasn't changed. It's still founded in 1991, and it's still whatever. My contact info, it's still the same phone number, etc. My privacy policy probably doesn't change too often. So WordPress differentiates between two types of screens, pages, and posts. So I'll show them both. We will say here, pages are screens of content that don't change often. Now again, I said earlier, all these notes that I'm writing, I'll give them to you at the end of the day. You, you'll be able to print them out or email them to yourself. You can take notes, of course. Um, but uh, I'll give you these notes at the end of the day. So pages in WordPress, you manage them right over here. I've got this whole uh, menu right here, pages. And when I look at the pages I currently have, well, this has given me, in my case, a sample page and a privacy policy. And I'll I'll mention something here. Actually, themes. Oftentimes, give you a design, but also features, such as pages and plugins and we'll cover what plugins are again soon but when I installed this current design let's see what do they call what's this one called again it's called Divin so all these themes have a name this one's Divin Divine I guess when I installed this theme it also gave me a page called privacy policy <coughs> So it's kind of helping me out. You probably need a privacy policy that might not have been there by default. But on a screen like here under Pages, I can easily add pages, delete pages, and say, I'm going to create the About Us page. And then I get this editor where you, you can write anything you want and bold it and put links and graphics and all of that. So I have a new page. As part of my theme, I have a brand new About Us page. I added a new item here, and 
you know, not too impressive at the moment. Some recommendations that I would say. Put as much about info as you can, and then I'll explain why in a moment, and put as much contact info as you can, and I'll explain why in a moment. So this is a little advanced, but let's see if anyone knows. What do you think the value of having About Us, an About Us page, what do you think the value of that might be? Keywords for what? For, for SEO, exactly. So uh, this type of page helps in SEO. SEO is a big topic. That's why I usually teach it as a month-long class. There's a lot to cover of SEO. One of the things to think about is this, that an about, an about screen is a place where you can have keywords keywords, metadata, etc. And again, we, we don't have the time to get into all of these details. You just make notes. You learn about them in other classes or look them up. But in this is one of the factors that can help you rank better than your competitors. You have a screen with keywords and such. Question? I, I have a question. So when you do about us, mm -hmm. and you put in a lot of keywords, is that That, that's why, like I said, that this is like kind of a longer discussion. The short answer is no. Um, you can submit your website to the search engines like Google, Yahoo, etc. to let them know, hey, my website exists. Hey, check out my website and analyze it. Hey, now that I exist, maybe you can rank me better. Because if I create a brand new website, the search engines don't know you exist eventually they'll find you because their little crawlers, their little software is running all over the internet trying to find stuff. With so many millions, billions of websites, who knows when they'll find you. So um, just because you set yourself up uh, with some keywords on your page doesn't mean they'll actually find you. you. One tactic is to submit to the search engines, and that's something that I cover in the, uh, in the other class. Uh, but just to put some notes in here, we can say, um, after you uh, set up SEO tactics on your site, also submit your site, also known as verify your site, verify your site with the search engines. And I say search engine generically, but then of course uh, Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. And if you'd like to learn more about it, obviously use the search engine to look up how do I submit my website to Google. Uh, but this is one, one important thing to think about, one of the many factors of SEO that the search engines don't know I exist. I have to let them know that I exist. And that can then help me rank a little better. And so another thing here. Um, Uh, contact info. Uh, contact info has some value to SEO, which is a, which is a computer software that figures out your rankings. Um, what do you think is a value to having a, a good detailed contact info screen? Who might that be useful for? Potential customers. Well, uh, more in the direction of useful for uh, future or current customers. How can they get in touch with you? So if I want to get in touch with your website and I fancy myself pretty, so pretty, pretty uh, tech savvy, I might say, OK, I want to contact you on Twitter because I'm on Twitter all the time I've got it on my phone that's how I communicate are you on Twitter nope okay well uh, you're not reaching me maybe a very techie audience okay there's the classic of course email maybe I'm very comfortable I want to send you an email do you have uh, 
a little contact form where I can send you a question I want to send you an email do you have this product where's my product email okay there's a couple of uh, digital ways there what what other ways might there be of contact phone number yeah people still use those so phone number what about mailing address now maybe I'm running my business from my garage so I don't want to put a mailing address that's perfectly fine but I'm saying here put as much contact info as you can because it's useful for the customers for real people this is not as much a thing about SEO it's about the real the regular people you know trying to get in contact with you that have an issue with your product or have a question etc mm -hmm. exactly it depends on your product about how much contact info to add but think about yourself if you are buying a product and it costs more than ten dollars are you going to feel comfortable trying to buy something from a company that seems shady now that's a leading question of course but no contact no contact way well again um, it, it So that's a, that's a question I cannot fully answer because it depends on the product. So if I have a, a physical product that I'm trying to buy, I would like to also see some sort of physical address to get in touch. If it's a virtual product, I'm selling music or books or things like that, that might not be as important. But think of in terms of putting yourself in, in their shoes, I want to get in contact with this website. It looks bad to me that they don't have that info. Now again, if I don't want to put my home address I can have some sort of PO box, which yes, of course, that I can put. I can buy a, you know, fifty dollars a year PO box and run a shady business out of that. So you can never fully appease everyone, but that's why I'm saying the more of this that you can put in, the better. Some people want to contact you through Facebook chat. Some people email. Some people phone. Some people send a letter. A PO box is an alternative to that if I don't want to put my real address phone number I don't want to put my home address my home phone number or my cell phone you can get a Google Voice number Google Voice phone number Google gives you a free phone number that phone number is attached to a real phone you have to verify that you have a real phone and when someone calls your Google Voice number it basically gets forwarded to your real phone which they don't see and so that's a way to have a contact number that way you can also have it automatically go to voicemail you can record a nice phone number that says welcome to Victor's Bakery we can't answer your phone call at the moment we'll get back to you in 24 hours and then you uh, can check who called and reply to them and all of that so Google Voice it's free at the moment but it is tied to a real phone and that's <laughs> that's a way to kind of show trust in your um, uh, in your business, the more real information you have. Posts, where you manage your dynamic content. Okay, let me show you this. <coughs> I have a page, I have a screen over here of pages. Oh, it's not, it's not pages, um, posts. A, a screen full of posts. We have pages which don't change too often and posts which do change on a regular basis this is the this is the blog portion of the website defining what a blog is does anyone have an opinion what's a blog personal diary sure anything else articles Stories, content created on a regular basis. So that's a more theoretical definition, but these also work here. Uh, you probably visit a lot of blog websites. You keep up to date on a topic or a hobby. They have something every day or every week something new to read like I was saying over here 
I was reading this blog, sixcolors.com, where they were covering the, the latest news with Apple, so it's got their latest articles, or maybe over at uh, browneyedbaker.com. This is a blog that focuses on cookies and baking and recipes and all of that, and dogs sometimes. So that's, uh, that's one there. Or what about uh, InvestorJunkie.com? What do you think they're about? If I spell it right, not Investory, Investor. It's about money and finance, and then there's uh, you know, all, that, all that boring stuff. So um, these are articles. This is content that is published every week or, or day or, or whatever amount of time. Let me show it over here. Articles. So all of these articles on these topics. Personal finance, real estate, etc. These are a variety of topics. Well, okay, uh, a post is an article or a diary entry or a story or whatever, something posted on a regular basis. Um, this content also has some value for SEO. This is also more content to, to that could be found by the search engines, that could be analyzed, that can be used to rank you. Uh, this is where more keywords can be. So for more keywords, for better rankings. Yes? The, the content that you're creating, yes, is one of the big things that is helping you get ranked by the search engine. So what I see a lot of times with clients is they have a very basic sort of uh, business card type of site with such minimal information that it's not helping them get found, get clients, etc. because they haven't set up these other screens of content, they haven't written content on a regular basis. So it's a deeper topic, but the really condensation of it is the content. Content is what helps your, your website get found by the search engines. All the details and nuance, well that's what the other classes about or reading articles and so forth but yes it's all the content that you're creating so in WordPress it's pretty easy I want to add a new post and then I give it a new title like you know how to bake mint cookies this could be uh, keywords this could be a phrase that someone is actually searching for Right, I go on any search engine and I look how to bake mint cookies. And here there's 91 million results. And how does it figure out what's the best result? There's a lot of factors. But notice all of them are using these keywords. <coughs> mint cookies, mint chocolate chip cookies, butter with a side of bread, Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker is not the number one result here, even though you would think they're like the biggest name in baking. The number one result at the moment comes from McCormick. Okay, well, some of these keywords are going to be harder to break into when there's such already these big names in a field. But what if, if, I'm, if someone is searching for San Diego um, Bakery? You know, now here the results are smaller, it's more detailed, and I might, you know, get found this way. Here's Sugar and Scribe or Starry Lane Bakery. So this is a whole an art. This all of this is is an art and a science and magic about what uh, social uh, what SEO is. Lastly, over here, plugins. Add social media, 
features, add um, slideshows, add shopping carts. Etc. These sorts of things that might not be built in, I want to add things to it. These are plugins. These are extra features that I would add to my site. Have you ever been to a website? And I think it was actually here a moment ago. Have you been to a website where, like, there's a little pop up on the screen somewhere that says, You need any help? One of our agents is here to help you out. Well, that, we can probably get one to pop up in a moment. But that's that's a plugin. That's an extra feature you can add to your website. You can add into your WordPress website the ability to chat with someone visiting your site at the moment. You know that's a way to uh, talk with a customer much more directly. Try to make a sale much more directly. A real chat. Question. Yep. Yep, that's what I said earlier that a lot of what WordPress is is based on this freemium model where uh, right here where a lot of it it's either a theme or a plugin or something that they you often get a free version that does some things and then when you need it to do more things that's when you pay for the subscription or the one-time fee. So yes, I don't doubt it that either that plugin that you might have seen had a had an upfront cost or it's very common that you get a version that has like 90% of what you need and then the last 10% that's when you pay for it. Um I wouldn't trust that. I would get these plugins and such from like the official places like right here if I go into WordPress and I say add new this is like the official marketplace where it's a lot safer here if I want to add, you know, chat. So live chat, WhatsApp chat. Uh, so yes, you can also look up uh, on a regular search, you know, on, on any search engine. If you look up WordPress plugin uh, chat feature, yeah, you're going to find I got 63 million results. Um, I personally, and through my years of experience, I would not recommend going off to find um, plugins or themes for free somewhere out there. The ones that I've mentioned here, Theme Forest, the official plugin marketplace here, these are the places that I would trust more because anyone can create a theme and put it online, and anyone can create a plugin and put it online. It requires some coding. And if anyone can do that, the good guys and the bad guys can do it. So I, I would be wary about downloading something that I'm not that has not been rated and analyzed and such for the safety of your site and better yet for the safety of your customers. If this plugin that I found on some website is hacked, your website got hacked, and there goes your customer database and all of that. I would say for any for any of these third party uh, themes, plugins, etc., get them from official channels. The WordPress marketplace. And that's built into that's built into WordPress. Or places like uh, Theme Forest. Um, what's the other one? Oh, Elegant Themes. Etc. There's other ones. Oh, I'll look up some other ones in a moment. But these are the ones that I, I deal with often. And uh, these are a lot more, more safe and secure. Well, the, that leads us to the big idea of this class. I needed to lay a little foundation, and then we'll get into more of the main point of the class. One of many 
good e-commerce plugins for WordPress is this one called WooCommerce. That's the one I'm going to focus on in the class. That's been around for several years. It was one of the biggest names in in e-commerce. It's it's a plugin that we add to to our word to our WordPress and then it activates these various e-commerce features of which we'll go into in detail in the class and they were so big and popular and such that eventually they got bought by the WordPress company and now it's like an official WordPress add-on so there's many there's many of these out there like Shopify and um, uh, WP e-commerce there's a bunch of plugins out there this is one of the biggest ones you can find books about this so this is the one I'm going to focus on in this class. If you already have a website, if it's already WordPress and it's using something else, that's fine. You can probably still do what you need to do with it. But when I show stuff on my screen here and talk about details, this is the one I'm going to focus on. How many of you had heard of WooCommerce before? Okay, a few people. Good. Um, we will we will go into the detail here. So, as usual, freemium. It has a lot of what you need free right out of the box and then it has a, a, a paid version where you can get a few more features but one of the big features is tech support I want to be able to fix a problem I need help um, I can have the tech support as part of the subscription to buy the full or, or the premium version of the plugin WooCommerce handles these various features. Inventory, listings, pricing, um, shipping, taxation. Whenever I teach the class, and we and, and, and when we get more hands-on um, I, I always ask at the beginning are you sure you want to become the next Amazon because amazon.com has to deal with all of these things they have a warehouse full of people and robots that have the product on a shelf that they then have to pick it up and put it on the conveyor belt and take it to the post office and whatever they have prices that they have to manage when the product runs out, they have to take it off the website. It ran out. They have to ship it across the country or the world. That costs money. They have to tax you for it. Back in the good old days, there was no tax online. Now things are getting taxed online. And you have to deal with this now. Let's say, Victor's Bakery, I want to ship my cookies and my cupcakes all over the U.S., well, I need to have some sort of box that will hold the item. That's not free. I then need to uh, pay some sort of shipping, maybe weight-based or a flat rate. We'll cover all of these in detail, of course. But now I have to deal with that it costs money to get this cake across the country. And I have to charge tax to people. And the cakes ran out, so I have to remove it from the website. So when you buy a product on Amazon, it's so easy. I go on the website, maybe I have the app on my phone, and I have the product, I press buy, my credit card's already built in there, I just press buy, and then I wait a few days and I get it at my doorstep. Well, now you as the business owner, you have to get that product out of the, out of the inventory or out of your garage or wherever you have the product, and then you have to take it to the post office or use you know um, uh, shipping uh, companies like stamps.com or whatever, and you have to send it to people and send them their tracking info and then have the money transfer and all that good stuff which we'll cover but a plugin like WooCommerce lets you manage all of that and this is when when we start off I say are you sure you want to become the next Amazon because you have to then do all of this and manage it and you'll make mistakes and that's okay but hopefully you learn it you get better at it because you can decide two routes DIY or someone else. Uh, what does DIY stand for? Do it yourself. So there's the route of do it yourself, or there's a route of someone else do it for me. Uh, do it yourself is 
WordPress plus WooCommerce. That someone else does it is Etsy or eBay or Amazon Marketplace or whatever they're calling it. I have these products that I want to sell and I'm using their infrastructure it's for them to take care of the shipping and the and the taxing and all of that. I just need to make the products. Well, oftentimes with these someone else will do it fees. There's often a lot of fees associated. Uh, you 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 want to have your home page on Etsy or you want to have your own little store on eBay and such and they are going to charge you for the transaction fees. I don't know how much. I don't use this these these ways that much for clients. It's pretty much the, this way. So usually there there's fees to be able for the convenience. You often trade convenience for a fee. Whereas the DIY, the do it yourself more powerful but more setup and management. Some of these other places, they, they, their setup is very easy. It walks you through all of the steps very easy. The more modern versions of WooCommerce that we will see, they're getting easier and easier to use. But still, some of these other ones are even easier. Like maybe I'm, I'm selling t-shirts. There's so many websites out there where you can set that up. Like there's one called Spreadshirt. Com. I have some great designs. All I have to do is upload my design, and they have the t-shirts and the sizes and, and the shipping and all of that. They're going to take, however, a, a cut, but it's much more convenient, and then maybe I can sell in quantity and bulk, and I make some money. Well, if I want to kind of recoup most the most money as possible that I can, I have to do it myself. But I have to buy the domain, I have to set it up, I have to install WordPress, I have to add my products, I have to do all the things we're going to talk about, and then I have to deal with all of the details, but I can get a bigger piece of the, of the profits of doing it. Yes? So, if you're going to sell a product or whatever you're selling, I know it's a cost of, but wouldn't you get more exposure if you sold That's another factor to consider because they already have an infrastructure. They already have Etsy and such are so, are like somewhat like of a marketplace plus a social network. They have this whole infrastructure of people connecting with people in the recommendation engine. Like if I bought this one cool rug, it might then recommend that that person buy my cool rug. So there's this whole infrastructure. So that's a big selling point as well for the have someone else do it, and then maybe that's that'll ne negate the the cost. But when you do it the do-it-yourself way, you have less restrictions in terms of there's a whole huge screen full of terms of services that you have to agree to that no one reads when you set up an account in all of these places. And what if my particular product is controversial for whatever reason? Well, they, they have the right to shut you down because it's not a matter of free speech. It's a matter of, you know, capitalism. So they can shut you down if you run afoul of whatever their rules on your own website you have in your own uh, your own systems here you have much more uh, you know openness to do things how you want but it's more setup and it's more work and maybe not as much exposure but maybe I have a good following on Instagram or I'm really good at Facebook and I have lo so many connections there so it is a trade-off So in this class, of course, I'm going to cover the DIY part of it. I'm going to show details in that. We'll take a break in a moment. But if I were to have a WordPress um, site, let me just put this back how I had it a moment ago. If I had a plain old WordPress site, plugins, add new, uh, and I would just search up here, WooCommerce, and then install. 
I'll go through the steps in a moment, but putting it in the notes to add WooCommerce to your WordPress site. Go to the dashboard, plugins, add new, search WooCommerce, and then install, and then activate. It's not it's not complicated but it's a lot of little clicks and some of these other we saw over at um, when I was on the other screen I think on Bluehost it said one click installation so some of these other providers they give you you know they, they help you out more install activate and then after after our break I'll show you details about that but uh, you're, you're able to start to set up your your e-commerce website pretty fast there's a lot to still learn about it and you can get a bunch of great books at the library or on Amazon and such about how does WooCommerce work you can go to WooCommerce.com and there's also the manual how does it work how do I add a product I'll show you a bunch of things but whatever we don't cover you can still get them from the site So I'll install that in a moment uh, questions so far? Okay, let's take one more break. 7.45, we'll take a break until 7.55. When we come back, I'll show you how to start to set up WooCommerce. We'll see how far we go there. Then on Thursday, if you were able to set any of this up on your own, then you'll maybe have more questions and stuff to do it in person. And of course, we'll cover as much as we can in our time here. Let's take a 10-minute break and we'll be back.